starting today, it's really important that you start your eye movement. So if some of you have some touch-up work to do, and one person can touch up the pain, and the rest of you can work on the eye movement, you need to provide a script of some kind. It can be either bulleted or word for word, but I think word for word takes way too long. I've created a new outline and simplified it. I'm going to hand one out to everybody. You need to do this on, um, in classroom, and I'll provide a document for you to work on. This will be part of your grade. So let's go through it. Introduction. You introduce the members of your group. I need to know why this project was created. What's important about it? Does it have a personal connection to you, or do you feel the need to educate, inspire, make aware a certain group or someone in the community? Maybe that group needs to be appreciated. Maybe there are issues that you feel empowered about that you can talk about. And I think if we went around the room right now, everybody could pretty much give me um, a reason for this project. Okay? Art is a visual communication tool. You're using this tool to communicate an idea. You have a very limited amount of time. You have a lot of freedom, but you don't have a lot of time on this project. We're basically doing 10 projects in 10 weeks. I meet with you every other day for 20 weeks, which is 10 weeks of school. You get in here, you need five minutes to set up your paints, five minutes to clean up. So basically you have half an hour every other day. So this is why today you really need to stop and start the eye movie, because you have till next Friday to finish it. So what, basically four or five days to get it done. So this is the part where you have to organize your time, all right, you really have to be organized here. And if you're not done, you need to figure out how to get done in time, which means coming in either after school or during SSR. So going through the movie one more time, you're going to read your letter. Everyone had a contact person, someone they could go to, almost like a mentor, to talk about their project or get information. Um, if you go around the room really quickly, who was your contact mentor? Mr. Salamini. Mr. Salamini. Why was he your contact mentor? Uh, well, well, like he's the like, like he's the um, like special ed teacher at our school, so like we thought like since our project is like autism awareness, that it would be like a good idea to write like ideas. So you found a good resource right in the school. Excellent. Uh, uh, Mr. Hennessy. Why? Um, well, he's a dying counselor and he deals with this stuff like every day, trying to like help people to love themselves. So. Okay. So you went right to him. Was it helpful to have him as your mentor? Yeah. Okay. Girls? Mr. Allen. Um, he's the dean of students, so every every year he sees another group of kids go by trying to like achieve what they want in life. Um, so he sees a lot of kids become successful, and that's really important. Okay. Ava? Jess? This is Romaine, because she had dogs, and we don't know as much about them for a project about animal adoption. Right? Let's talk about Let's talk about that. Okay. okay. That's that's school. Um, so, you, you don't have to. I just need one. Do you have a song that we need? It's a new place. Big Bang Theory. Okay. Other than... And I can't so the five minutes after school. Right after school. I have to text my mom. Did you text her now, please? The motivation for this class, which started two years ago, um, really to me started with giving students a voice and using their art as a vehicle to somehow better the community, the world, the school. And I thought, you know, what, what better way is to do that is through their artwork. And in that process, they would learn um, skills. So it's like a win-win situation for both of them. So I always start this class uh, almost 20 weeks ago where kids brainstorm ideas. And I have a whiteboard across the room uh, which talks about purpose. Uh, purpose for civic responsibility. 
So we have to find one of, we first we make a list of what's important and what they can do with their own work. And then they, they probably choose almost all those those skills, all those things that they can include in their own But some have well, personal you just say that you just say like, um, And then they get really excited. But the problem with that is you have 20 students with 20 different ideas. So then they have to work that out. And that's a very interesting process. A, they want to work with their friends. B, you know, one student may be very interested in autism because they have a sibling that um, has autism, and another student no, may want to work with um, equality. So it's very difficult. And then they sit down and they hash it out. And that takes about a week. Then they come up with a proposal, um, just like in the real world. You know, they have to sell me their idea. And that's very really interesting. So they make a whole presentation why they believe in something. And uh, we haven't even started to do the artwork yet. So we're starting to run out of time. And they sit down and they start sketching. And they do rough sketches of their ideas. So we actually have a folder of the process. So for example, this project, which was a tree, I'm not even sure if it started out as a tree or not. Was your, were your first sketches a tree when you first started this? They were? Well, because you guys, in the beginning, like everyone draw a tree, and, like just like anything. Right. So it kind of like blossomed because of that. <laughs> I forgot about that. So one of the exercises we did to get kids to start thinking visually was I told them to draw a tree with a purpose. Yeah. It could be a tree with peace signs hanging from the, the branches or whatever. And they kind of held on to that idea because the tree represented and symbolized things to them that meant something. And the reason I really am very attached to this piece is because every element in the piece has symbolism. It's about autism, but the autism logo is a puzzle piece. One of you want to describe this really quick? Because well, I think you describe it better than I do. Because the puzzle pieces are like the leaves because like the puzzle piece represents what autism is. Like fitting into the puzzle. Oh my gosh. Like, and then the roots kind of describe like how the tree's like growing into like something and it's like our piece is called different not less because you could be like you could have a disability but still be like and still be different but like no less to anyone else so and then we have like our quote about autism like what we think it, like autism is like here and then we have like the actual internet definition here and like we had someone like ask it before we did that like do you know what our pieces about and they didn't really know so we had to add something else to it so that was one of the challenges we had what's well, easy when you have an idea in your head but how do you communicate that to everybody to a whole community and what is that called what do you think that skill is called being able to express it to the whole community Perseverance? I think you have to persevere. I think you have to like adapt to like other people's perspectives. Yeah. All those things, right? Okay. So what's very unique about this particular project is it's important what the project is, but almost what's more important is where they're putting this project. And if you think about that, but when it came to that, I was like, oh my gosh, sometimes where a piece of art is is almost more important than what the piece of art is. So can one of you explain that really quickly, where it's going and why? So we're gonna put this like outside okay. of the girls' bathroom because okay. so we feel like to do when like people, people are feeling bad about themselves, they always run to the bathroom. So they can run to the bathroom and like pull when they're running to the bathroom, not in the bathroom, but they'll see this and like feel like better about themselves and like encouraging words on the side. And um, and then each member of the team and realize that they aren't like a bad person and they're actually like beautiful and strong stuff. Okay. Um, so what's my and story? what about the ceiling tiles? Oh, yeah. What we did oh, yeah. we actually oh, put, oh, we got ceiling tiles no, that was placed inside oh, of yeah. the bathroom. And it's kind of like what Bella was saying. Is like, as like they're running and going into the bathroom, as soon as they look up, they're going to see images that are bright and beautiful that are showing that you are beautiful and you're not like worthless. Yeah, exactly worthless. So they're getting hit twice with art, you know, once in the bathroom and once when they walk out. And maybe that will have some positive impact on them. Maybe not on a lot of people, but even if it's one person, 
you know, you've done that. I think that was a great idea for this project.